This is Reframe, the podcast from the College of Education, Health, and Society on the campus of Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. Big Brothers Big Sisters of America is one of the oldest and largest youth organizations in the country, and it has one ultimate goal, to help all children reach their full potential through mentorship and support. But today, mentorship means a lot more than simply being a positive presence in the life of youth. And on this episode, we speak with Tim Pelkey, who is among the innovators helping adults, large organizations, and even entire communities engage children in relevant new ways. Tim has played a key role in implementing several pioneering initiatives at Big Brothers Big Sisters, including the popular Bigs and Blue program, which addresses deep social issues by improving the relationship between the police and the people they protect. He's also a Miami graduate who's using his expertise in family science to help others considering this field pursue rewarding new career paths. My name is Tim Pelkey, and I am the program design manager on the foundation grants team at Big Brother Big Sister of America. I have really a really cool job. My job is really to find those diamonds in the rough, the programs that are new and innovative among our network of 240 plus Big Brother Big Sister agencies across the country. And uh, to be able to develop pilot projects that can, we can roll those up and expand and use those really across the country. So as a program design manager, it seems like you're doing a lot of things that people might not usually associate with earning a degree in family science. So are these things that are kind of unique in this field, or how do they factor into uh, what you originally studied before you found yourself on this career path? I would say I, I maybe have pushed the limits a little bit. And you know, especially early on, I had a lot of people question, well, why do you have this degree? What's the value that it adds? But I, you know, I really, that degree has been the fuel not only for you know getting started in my career, but now that I'm further along, you know it really is something I can draw back on that skill base that others that you know, maybe don't have a degree, you know an advanced degree or some of the experiences that I was able to have on Miami you know, in terms of service learning and involvement in the community that I can I can draw back on that knowledge and experience and and really use that to provide a perspective that others wouldn't have. So I think most of us are familiar with uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters, especially their goal to provide, you know, mentorship uh, services between children and adults. But your role as a program design manager seems to either expand that goal or to kind of go beyond it in unique ways that I think people might not normally associate with an organization like this. So what are some of the projects you've worked on? What are some examples of what you've uh, you've been in charge of and how does that align with what this organization is trying to accomplish? couple examples. One is the Comcast Beyond School Walls program. And this is actually the, the largest workplace mentoring program nationally. And uh, it's been around for over 10 years. And really, what, what's cool about it is not only do youth get mentoring, but they get exposure to workplace opportunities, being able to interact with adults in a, in a workplace. And they see through that, you know, what it's like to work in a job. And uh, the program is the way it operates, you travel to a local Comcast NBC Universal office location, either once or twice a month, and they do this during the school year. The program includes lunch, educational programming, and opportunities for mentors to, inter to interact individually with you. So they get you know both the one-to-one -one mentoring. But they also get the opportunity to learn alongside an adult who coaches them. And just to give you a few examples, youth learn uh, you know, about digital literacy, mm -hmm. being able to learn you know, essentially you know, computer skills and the types of things that you would need to succeed in a 21st century job. And with that, the soft skills, you know, being able to interact with people, to communicate well, you know, what it's like to have a job, go to work every day, how to interact you know, appropriately with coworkers in the workplace. As well as, you know, one of the you know, one of the great things about being a partner with Comcast is that they're developing a lot of new and unique technologies in the entertainment space, and our youth get out, get the opportunity to see some of these things in action. Just to give an example, our youth at uh, the Philadelphia office they actually get introduced to their mentor on the set of The Voice, hmm. so they actually use the chairs and everything. Is it hard to get into that program? Like, how selective are kids who get a chance to do that? Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, 
it varies a little bit by school how they actually choose the youth. It could be that you know they're recommended by a teacher or a guidance counselor, or in some cases the parent may you know request that they participate in the program. But that there's usually you know recognition that you know this is mostly a program that targets middle school and high school students. Mm-hmm. So just to give an example from our Northeast Florida office in Jacksonville, they actually partner with a career academy. And it's youth that are in a class that is focused, you know, really on digital literacy type topics. And they they have developed a curriculum that really fits along with what the kids are learning in school. So they get an opportunity in their mentoring time to be able to apply what they've learned in a supportive environment. So there's different things in different areas, but no matter where you're in, it seems like you can find what might be available around your area. So like, for example, we're in Cincinnati, so local schools here, for example, could contact Big Brothers and Big Sisters to find out what's available here and how they could nominate their students for things like this, right? Yes, definitely. And uh, the Butler County and Cincinnati offices are both great, and they have a long history of successfully serving the youth in the community. So there, I would encourage... You know, businesses and other organizations that are interested in partnering to really reach out to them. Another thing I know that has been a very exciting new program that Big Brothers Big Sisters has been involved in is the Bigs and Blue program, which I know is also part of your job. Can you explain a bit more about what the Bigs and Blue program is, what it hopes to achieve, and how you're involved? Yes, James. Uh, Bigs and Blue is really an exciting program, and you know we've all seen in the news examples of negative interactions between police and young people. This is really a way to be able to, to counteract that and through, the, through relationships. Because one of the things that we found is that you know, very, it's very rare for youth and police to be in situations where they interact individually in a positive way you know, in, the, you know, in the actual community where youth live. There are currently 101 agencies that have a Bigs and Blue program right now in 35 states. So over a very short period of time, it's been able to really grow. And just to give you a few examples, we have mentors that are, that are police officers, sheriff's deputies, state highway patrol, FBI officers, and other law enforcement. It seems like it's a way to really expand like the scope of Big Brothers Big Sisters and in, in actually quite a profound way because it's going beyond just that you know positive role model, but to actually incorporate civic leaders and entire civic organizations in a very direct way. Well, one of the things in working in the youth development space, there's always a fight to remain relevant. And you know, with that, it's being responsive to the issues that come up in you know, everyday life. And this is a great example of us being able to, to be responsive to a need in the community that really you know, relationships are the best way to be able to address. It definitely has that relevance. I mean, it doesn't take much to just turn on the news and see, you know, the growing confrontational divide between certain segments of society and also certain law enforcement organizations. So to begin to be able to sort of find ways to improve that relationship uh, seems very relevant and very important today. So I know this program is fairly new, uh, but how do you hope it evolves from here? So if a youth gets involved now, how do you hope that that continues to improve maybe their outlook on life or even their relationship with uh, uh, law enforcement organizations? How do you hope it evolves going forward? That's a great question, James. Number one, you know, really, it's that really building relationships that is number one with this program. Being able to change attitudes that youth have towards police officers, but also the attitudes that police officers have towards youth to Mm -hmm. provide a platform where youth have opportunity to build an understanding with adults that are police officers and understand that they're real people, you know, just like them. You know, I guess secondary benefits, I mean, they're exponential, you know, in a way, you know, police may, you know, youth may decide that they want to become police officers. It also may mean that, you know, how they talk about police officers with, you know, other young people, you know, I know I've heard examples through this program of young people, you know, really correcting their friends when they say negative things about police officers because they have a personal relationship with a police officer that they know cares about them and, you know, really wants them to do well. And so really raising up a generation of young people that have had positive interactions with police 
can have secondary impact in terms of how you know their neighbors, their friends, their family members understand police and their role in the community. And on the, on the flip side of that, police officers that have a better understanding of young people and their neighborhoods and communities are going to be more effective in their role as well. So really everyone wins. So let me give you a couple examples. One, uh, Big Brother Luke is a, a sergeant with the Los Angeles Police Department. And their program got started in 2017 in partnership with the Los Angeles Rams NFL team. And Luke is, you know, one of the things he's been great at is being able to go to the roll calls and represent Big Brother, Big Sister and recruiting officers. But he's also been a great mentor with the, with the organization. Yeah, here's a quote from Luke. From what I see, Bigs and Blue police mentoring kids, it's not a solution. It's the only solution to all of the issues that we are having in the community, he says. I truly believe that when we talk about community engagement, this is the best form of community engagement out there. So say you have a community who learns about Bigs and Blue and says, this sounds great. This sounds perfect. Sounds exactly what we need and what we want to happen. Like, what's the next step for them to make this a reality in their community? First step would be to reach out to your local Big Brother, Big Sister agency. And if you look at bbbs.org, you'll be able to access a directory feature that will provide contact info. What does it look like for your role as a program design manager to actually set these programs up? Is that something you're directly involved in? That really falls in the, the wheelhouse of what I do on an everyday basis, James. My role is really to support our local agencies in getting this program started. And you know, with that, it's providing individual consultations with agencies on best practices on how to start a, a Bigs and Blue program. The you know, second, uh, really coaching them through the process, provide developing resources and supports. You know, we've done webinars, we've developed handbooks and other guides that can be adapted for local use. So that really, we you know we developed you know, well-organized, well-oiled machine that based on, we've been able to have agencies not start from zero with this program, but learn from the other, the experiences of other agencies across our network. And through that, know that, you know, what some of the things that work well and some of the things that don't work well. That speaks again back directly to the way your role uniquely intersects with different ways you can use a family science degree, I think. I mean, there's mentorship involved, sure, but there's also mostly, you know, program design and management and working with communities and bolstering the way local leaders build relationships with youth and now exciting new ways that's very relevant with Bigs and Blue, for example. So is this a way that maybe someone considering this career path can sort of imagine new possibilities if they're not interested, for example, in pursuing the traditional, like, counselor career path? One of the real benefits of a family science degree is the versatility that it provides. You know, I've known uh, people that have went through the program with me that you know, are doing all sorts of different things. You know, they're working you know, in the child welfare space. Sure. You know, they're working, you know, they may have went on to get a counseling degree. You know, they may be working in ministry in a church setting. Or you know, they could actually be working in a corporate environment doing something you know, completely unrelated. But the skills that they develop through this degree, you know, in terms of being able to understand how to use information and be a consumer of data, that knowledge of, you know, basics about how families and, you know, how people operate are things that are applicable regardless of the type of job that you do. So I think, you know, one thing is being open to where the opportunities lie. When I started out in my career, I had no idea that things would go the way they did. But I, you know, I've really enjoyed the journey, and I, I think you know the degree that that I've been able to attain through Miami University has really been you know kind of the rocket fuel that has helped me to get where I am today. Tim Pelkey is the program design manager for Big Brothers Big Sisters of America. And to find more information about Bigs and Blue and other programs, you can visit bbbs.org. And thank you for listening to the Reframe Podcast. There are many more episodes available for free on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, or wherever you wish to listen. 